In my last CRX video, I made a custom radiator support to support the Volkswagen radiator and we also got some custom hoses and trimmed everything that we had to to make the whole system work. Now at the end of the last video, I did determine that there was a leak in the cooling system. So let's go ahead and figure out where this leak is at. So it took about five business days for the pressure to bleed off. You can see the gauge here is completely at zero. And that tells me the leak that I have here is a very small leak. So I did end up putting some pieces of cardboard underneath the radiator as well as the entire engine. And the piece underneath the engine was bone dry. But you can see this uh, like bluish staining that we have on this piece of cardboard that was underneath the radiator. So that tells me it's a radiator that's leaking and it's pretty obvious once you start looking up you can see the drip coming right off of the end of the tank here. Now I'm not sure if it's coming from the weld or the fitting that's here at the end where you would drain the radiator. I have to do a little bit more investigating before I go pointing fingers at anyone. But the thing I'm really happy about is that the engine itself, all the work I've done up until this point seems to be 100% sealed. Not a single drip of coolant came out of that thing. And that's absolutely great news to me. Moving on to the traction bar, I went with Innovative. I just like the design of it. It looks real heavy duty, so it's what I went with. And let's go ahead and bolt this up. It looks pretty straightforward and I'm expecting it to just fit without any issues. So fingers crossed. Yeah, but you ain't no psycho. You're not like the others, no No changing behaviors Not sure how to act around you So colorful and bright, yeah I wanna be a nine to five You made me come alive, babe I wanna be the time of your life Come change my life just for a while Let's go for a ride, now. I'll tie the cup, we come alive Let's go for a ride, now. I wanna get to know you I don't wanna leave so soon you and me forever, or maybe just for tonight Do you wanna get to know me? I will give it all to you You and me forever, don't care about nothing else Making it happen, yeah Cause you're a winner, I'm not gonna fall down This ain't my final ride, don't get any in the corner I don't wanna be alone, Ay, sitting looking like a loser but I don't wanna lose ya Come change my life just for a while Let's go for a ride now Outside the club, we come alive Let's go for a ride now. I wanna get to know you I don't wanna leave so soon You want me forever Or maybe just for tonight Do you wanna get to know me? I will give it all to you You want me forever Don't care about nothing else Here I am on the right side of the car and you can see the distance between the crank pulley and this arm. This is way better than I was expecting. We got about a two inch gap. Uh, supposedly some people have an issue with this arm getting really close if not completely coming in contact with the crank pulley. As you can see I'm using the Hasport mounts on the highest setting because I prefer ground clearance over hood clearance. So maybe this is what's playing the big role in all of this. I'm not really sure. Actually I am sure that's what's helping but I'm gonna take any win I could get. Here goes another part from Hasport. This is to remedy the issue of that crank pulley coming in contact with the arm. You can see how it dips down in the center. So I went ahead and bought this just in case I needed it. Turns out it doesn't look like I'm going to need it. So once again, another case of wasting money. I guess this is gonna have to go on eBay and sell it for less money than what I paid for it. Once again, my loss. I know, I know, I hear you already. You're saying to yourself, hey John, you charismatic, funny, ridiculously good looking man. The reason why you have so much clearance is because the suspension isn't loaded, the car's off the ground. 
So, you know what? Let me go ahead and put together as much as I have to on the suspension so we can actually get the car back on the ground for the first time in maybe over a year. It's been a while since I've actually seen this car on the ground and I actually forgot how small or low to the ground this car is. It's just kind of blowing my mind. So <laughs> let's go underneath the car real fast because I want to see the clearance between the oil pan and the ground. And it's coming in, the lowest part of the pan is coming in at about five inches. I know the suspension has to settle a little bit, so let's just say about four inches. That, that that's not bad i'm i'm okay with that right yeah not bad at all so let's go check the clearance between that pulley and the arm once again and guys this is a very difficult shot to try to get uh it's just hard to get my camera inside of here i know you guys are at a weird angle but from what i can see with my eyes this thing's at about an inch and a half so that's not bad i think there's plenty of room for suspension travel and i don't think i'm gonna have an issue here Unless someone knows otherwise and they know I'm guaranteed to have an issue, just go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, but so far, it's looking pretty good to me. And moving on, here we have some parts from K-Tuned. Guys, these are some really nice parts. If you ask me, they're a little bit too nice for this car. <laughs> anyway, we have some shifter cables here. The bracket for the shifter cable as well as the shifter assembly. This is the RSX style. And everything just looks absolutely fantastic. Look how pretty. That is a work of art, guys. So I'm super excited to get this in the car and get this bad boy into pounding some gears. So clearly that part didn't fit and in fact none of them were going to fit. So allow me to introduce you to Blade, Laser. Blazer and Michelle. You're probably wondering how did you order about a thousand dollars worth of parts and they're all wrong. Well when I ordered them I didn't have a transmission at that point and I wasn't thinking about the transmission when it popped up for sale I'm like let me just jump on this deal. Well I didn't realize that the K20 Z3 transmission is not compatible with all the shifter components I bought previously. So yes about another grand worth of parts. This video is not looking good guys and this is why it takes me so long to put out these videos. These, these videos are nothing but money pits. It just drives me nuts. And I know haters are going to say these videos are staged but I promise it's not staged man. It just all happens naturally. Anyway, uh, you can see I am moving along here. I am making some progress. And why is that? Well because people have been harassing me. This car is never going to get done. By the time it gets done I'll be old and blah 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 all kinds of crap. Well, if you haven't noticed, I changed the format to really show that progress is being made. And I'm not spending so much time on little things like I used to make my videos. I'm really trying to get this thing moving and I'm really pushing to get this car running, guys. So believe me when I say that. Uh, so what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and use these what people call rib nuts. And I'm going to use that to mount the shifter base plate to the car. So this is a pretty neat tool and it works pretty dang well. You just have to make sure you drill the appropriate size hole into the car. And this is a rib nut that I'm going to be using. Of course, make sure that your fastener threads into it before you go using it. So we are using the M8 and the drill size is 11 millimeters or 716. So as long as you're drilling the correct hole, the part should fit perfectly. Story, yo, yo. 
Yo soy tu bella chía, en todos mis pasos la baby confía Perrea de noche pero va a sentar de día Me dice al DJ que le pongo una de dos No sino un perreito pa' moverlo bien cabrón Que le saca ritmo a cualquier canción Y que tiene un cantando y se rato el corazón Y el ya, como tú te mueves así bien bien mami Y como estoy toda la vuelta Busca como la playa de Miami Como con mami tú estás so that went as smooth as I could have hoped for. Now it's time to get these shifter cables in place and you have to set them through the firewall. And to me, the only logical place seems like this round section that's right here. And if my math is correct, you know, simple physics, it should exit right here, right where I put that X. Like I said, simple physics. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill through this thing with some sort of a hole saw. I don't know what size it is, but it seemed to fit perfectly. So looking at the thickness of this thing, the math wasn't mathing, okay? I figured that there was two layers of metal here. So after I cut through the first one, sure enough, there is a second layer of metal you gotta cut through. You can see I already went through both of them. On the other side, that's actually the subframe on top and this thing on the bottom is the sway bar. So I did go underneath the car and loosen the sway bar bushings enough to like drop the sway bar, maybe like a quarter inch. And it gave me enough clearance that when the hose saw poked through, it wasn't gonna start cutting into my sway bar. Uh, so really simple workaround, not that big of a deal. And now we could go ahead and push the cables through the hole. It's kind of a tight fit uh, because the cables don't really want to bend that well, but I'm no stranger to pushing big things into small holes. Over here on the transmission side, you can see I got the cables connected, but it wasn't as easy as you would think. I actually had a really hard time trying to get those cables to mount onto the transmission and pretty much the same exact thing on the shifter. And look what's going on here. It doesn't want to go side to side and it, it frankly just doesn't want to go into any gear besides third it's like locked up and guys i spent a lot of time trying to wrap my mind around this trying to figure out what's going on here i was like ready to start modifying these shift cables these very expensive shift cables because i'm like you know something's not adding up here this doesn't make sense so what i did was i removed the retainer clip off of the bracket right here and i noticed that if i pull the cable out maybe like half an inch then everything has the appropriate travel that it needs in order to work properly. So that's what got me looking into this bracket. And sure enough, there is a difference guys. So I ordered a bracket for a K20 Z3 transmission for a 10th generation Civic. And guys, my transmission is off of an eighth generation Civic. So when I went on the Honda website, I looked up the original part and it was, it was very obvious. It just hit me in the face. These parts are different. Look at the mounting hose of where the bolts go in relation to where the cable mounts to the bracket. You see this one on the right side, the mounting point for the bracket is in front of the hole and on the left side, the mounting location is behind the hole and on the left side of the bracket here, look at the distance from this hole to where it mounts. That's maybe like an inch and a half and look at this, that's maybe only like a half an inch away. So even though they both fit the K20Z3, it will mount up, it's gonna put your shift cables in the wrong location and that's what's causing all the problems. Once I put the part in, everything fell into place and all the gears started working perfectly. So let's go ahead and try this. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and reverse. It seems like I keep making mistakes and they keep costing me money. It really sucks, trust me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this shifter assembly with a hybrid racing weighted shift knob. Number one, I prefer rounded shift knobs. I like weighted shift knobs and the aesthetic of this one just seems to match the shifter. So it was kind of a no brainer for me. Some of you may have noticed that the shift cables are coming in contact with the fuel filter. You can see it's all wobbly because I intentionally left it loose. Because of this, I knew I was gonna have to relocate it not a big issue. And moving on, I got a little bit of a surprise for you guys. Yes, that's right. I picked up some headers, some Skunk 2 Alpha K-Swap headers. These are supposed to clear a K-Swapped CRX without having to modify or cut the subframe. So that's what they claim. Let's see if it's true. Only one way to find out.
Well, I'm actually impressed because a aftermarket part actually does what it says it's going to do. Isn't that amazing in a perfect world? <laughs> so you can see the clearance between the subframe and the header is absolutely fantastic. Even on the bottom, look at all this clearance. That is absolutely crazy. No need to modify or cut the subframe or do anything. It just, <sighs> finally, I feel like I caught a break with this. Something that actually fits. <laughs> Anyway guys, but you know what? I hope you subscribe and come back in the future because in our next video, we're gonna pull the engine out, which I'm not gonna put you through that trouble of watching me do it. I'm just gonna pull it out uh, because we have some custom brake lines to make. That's right. And then the next time this engine goes in, it's kind of for good, for kind of, not, not really, but basically good enough to start the engine. That's the next time this engine is going in. So I hope you enjoyed the video and like always, thanks for watching.